During the early days of manufacturing, an optimist's work was inspected and a decision was made whether to accept or reject it. As businesses became larger, so too did this role, and the full-time inspection jobs were created. Accompanying the creation of inspection functions, other problems arose. More technical problems occurred requiring specialist skills, often not possessed by production workers. The inspectors lacked training. Inspectors were ordered to accept defective goods to increase output. Skilled workers were promoted into other roles, leaving less skilled workers to perform the operational job, such as manufacturing. These changes led to the birth of a separate inspection department with a chief inspector reporting to either the person in charge of manufacturing or the works manager. With the creation of this new department there came new services and issues, for example standards, training, recording of data and the accuracy of measuring equipment. Hence a quality control department evolved, in charge of which was a quality control manager with the responsibility for the inspection services and quality control engineering. It became clear that the responsibility of the chief inspector was more than just production acceptance and the need to address defective prevention emerged. In the 1920s, statistical theory began to be applied effectively to quality control and in 1924, Schuhert made his first sketch of a modern control chart. His work was later developed by Deming and in the early work of Schuhart, Deming, Dodge and Romig constitutes much of what today comprises the theory of statistical process control. However, there was little use of these techniques in manufacturing companies until the late 1940s. At that time, Japan's industrial system was virtually destroyed and it had a reputation for cheap imitation products and an illiterate workforce. The Japanese recognised these problems and set about solving them with the help of some notable quality gurus, Duran, Deming and Weigenbaum. In the early 1950s, quality management practices developed rapidly in Japanese plants and it became a major theme in Japanese management philosophy, such that by 1960, quality control and management had become a national preoccupation. By the late 1960s, early 1970s, Japan's imports to the USA and Europe increased significantly due to its cheaper, higher quality products compared to Western counterparts. In 1969, the first international conference on quality control, sponsored by Japan, America and Europe, was held in Tokyo. In a paper given by Feigenbaum, the term total quality was used for the first time and referred to wider issues such as planning, organisation and management responsibility. Ishikawa gave a paper explaining how total quality control in Japan was different in the meaning and referred to company-wide quality control and described how all employees from top management to the workers must study and participate in quality control. Company-wide quality management was common in Japan and Japanese companies by the late 1970s. The quality revolution in the West was slow to follow and did not begin until the early 1980s when companies introduced their own quality programs and initiatives to counter the Japanese success. Total Quality Management, TQM, became the center for these drives in most cases. In a Department of Trade and Industry publication in 1982, it was stated that Britain's world trade share was declining, and this was having a dramatic effect on the standard of living in the country. There is intense global competition, and any country's economic performance and reputation for quality was made up of the reputation and performance of its individual companies and products and services. The British Standard 5750 for quality systems had been published in 1979, 
and in 1983 the National Quality Campaign was launched using BS 5750 as its main theme. The aim bring to the attention of industry the importance of quality for competitiveness and survival in the world marketplace. Since then, the International Standardization Organization, ISO 9000, has become the internationally recognized standard for quality management systems. It comprises of a number of standards that specify the requirements for the documentation, implementation and maintenance of a quality system. TQM is now part of a much wider concept that addresses overall organisational performances and recognises the importance of processes. There is also extensive research evidence that demonstrates the benefits from this approach. As we move into the 21st century, TQM has developed in many countries into holistic frameworks aimed at helping organisations achieve excellent performance, particularly in customer and business results. In Europe, a widely adopted framework is the so-called Business Excellence or Excellence Model promoted by the European Foundation for Quality Management and in the UK by the British Quality Foundation.